So most of us were taught growing up to work hard, right? To delay gratification. And even a phrase called to eat the frog. What does that mean? That means to do the unpleasant thing first thing in the day so that you have gotten the, the hard and unpleasant things swallowed or done. Then you can go on and do the, the nice things, right? So this all presumes that work, on, working on the important things in our life and in our business is supposed to be a struggle and it's supposed to be a, a, an act of suffering. And although we can't, ex we can't escape pain in this life, I don't think we need to approach any part of life with suffering. There is a difference between pain and suffering, right? Pain is a sensation, often physical, but it can be mental or emotional, of some experience that we find to be unpleasant, okay? But suffering is then to judge that experience and to say, gosh, this is, this is terrible. I wish I didn't feel this way. And that's like, um, I think what the Buddhists call the second arrow. It's like you get shot with an arrow and then you shoot yourself again by, by making the unpleasant experience worse with your judgment of it and how bad and everything it is. So I want to tell you about uh, an alternative way of approaching work uh, and the way that I have been practicing for years and I think has allowed me to grow my business uh, successfully while remaining very sustainable in terms of my ability to keep doing everything that I do. Uh, the clients who know what I do are always amazed how do you do it all and still remain, you know, having a good work-life balance. Um, I take multiple breaks a day, many hours of breaks. And for those of you who have a family, instead of me doing my multiple naps a day, you might be with, you know, with your kids or with loved ones or taking care of somebody or whatever it may be. But I think that my schedule is doable for many of you who work on your business full time. You know, work, uh, I work less than 40 hours a week in total, which is better than most people who work full time. And um, anyway, it, it, it's really about a shift in focus from doing great work to doing work with joy. That's the entire shift. But of course, it's easy to say what actually matters is the practice that you do every single day. So for example, uh, when I'm recording this video, I have a choice between two focuses. I can either be thinking about how I need to make a great video, that the, this needs, I need to make sure I am impressive or I am attractive or I am getting my point across. Even, even this idea of I, make, I wanna make sure I'm getting my point across or I make sure I'm sharing my core message or I make sure I'm interesting people in my message and therefore my offerings. That's one focus is the end result. The end result is making a great product, making a great video, writing a great blog post, creating a great course, writing a great book, whatever it is. That's one focus. That's one possible focus. The other possible focus is how can I bring as much joy into the moment as I can? How can I simply show up? Yes, do the work, but to do it with joy is my focus. So I'm here to infuse my heart and my joy in this very moment. And if I do that, you know, the video usually turns out okay. Uh, it might even be great, but at least I am showing up for the work. At least I am enjoying the moment. And by showing up for the work consistently, I grow in my skills and also I grow in my character because I'm practicing the joy and the heart all the time. Now, I'm not perfect, obviously, so I slip often into worrying about the result. Like, oh, am I, is this gonna be a good video? Or is this gonna be, a, am I, if I'm writing, is this gonna be a great blog post? 
or am I creating a course? Is this going to be something people buy? Of course, uh, I'm a human being. I slip into worrying about the result and the outcome. But what I've practiced over the years is when I find myself worrying, that is my sign. That is my trigger to then go, oh, I, I'm focusing on, on the end result. Let me, let me go back to focusing on the process. And not just the process of, oh, working hard, you know, being diligent, but working with joy. I mean, oh yeah, let me bring it back to how can I infuse heart and joy into doing this work? Now, I'm not, you know, I'm not, when I say joy, I don't mean great, let me go play a video game now, or great, let me go and watch, watch a show, or let me go and eat a snack. That's called pleasure. That's not joy. That, that can, you know, there's a difference between pleasure and joy. I think it's really, or some people go, gosh, I work with joy by, by putting on a candle and putting on some nice music and being in a nice environment. Those are pleasurable sensations and it can support your ability to remember joy, but joy is with us at all times. It, like, like what I hope you will, you'll practice is, I hope you'll keep practicing such that one day, you know, in some lifetime, if you had to experience being in solitary confinement, being in jail, being, 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 being tortured or what, whatever terrible situation, you've got to such a high level of practice that you could even infuse joy into that moment. Now that is of course extreme, but what I'm saying is, and our work is, is it's much more pleasant than uh, those kinds of situations where people live in war-torn countries or people uh, are in traumatic uh, lives, lifestyles or whatever. We are, we, we are just trying to do some work here. Why, why can't we infuse it with joy? This is relatively low level practice that we are being asked to do. You see what I mean? So this is, the whole thing is a spiritual practice in my experience, in my, in my point of view. Writing is a spiritual practice. Making a video is a spiritual practice. Uh, doing your taxes is a spiritual practice. You know, uh, you know meeting with clients, uh, doing marketing, uh, doing your administrative work, doing chores. To me, it can all be a spiritual practice because it is the opportunity to infuse heart and joy into the moment. It's the opportunity to shift the focus from let's get this thing done and let's do, let's do a great job to let's do this with joy and heart and, and, and presence. So I hope this is helpful for you. And I hope that throughout the rest of today and the next day and the next day, you'll keep coming back to whatever you're doing and say, let, let me not worry about whether this is going to be a great blog post. Let me not worry about whether I'm going to make a great video or make a great course. Let me not think about that. Let me forget, get this, let me forget the high standard, okay, that my inner critic wants. Let me forget the standard completely. And let me instead lose myself in the heart and joy of the work, the moment. Finding, finding, and when I say joy, I mean joy not in the pleasurable circumstances, but joy in our breath. I mean, finding joy in something that's so deep within us that it's with us at all times, even if we were in jail. Okay, it's with us at all times. It's the source within us or outside of us, however you want to call it, it's the, it's the eternal source of joy. And some of us find it through our breath. Some of us find it through our imagination. Some of us find it through prayer or meditation or mantra or something, but something that's with you every day of, of your life without a candle, without music, without a pleasant environment, without pleasant circumstances. It's with you. And yes, the candle can help remind you of it, but it's still, you have the inner candle, you have the inner music, you have the inner essential oils or the inner fragrance, it's in, inside. And, and if you practice that, at first it's very subtle and it's barely, you can barely sense it. You practice it more and more and then it becomes really, really, it gets easier and easier to breathe into, oh yeah, that's right, the joy of the moment. So I hope this is helpful. And I look forward to your comments. And I'm just going to take a moment now to see if there are comments in the Facebook Live uh, that I'm making right now. And those who are watching elsewhere can.
comment below. I always love seeing your comments. So thank you so much for joining me, Kali, Tiga Rose, Captain, Gudrun. Thanks so much, uh, Captain and Gudrun, for your comments there. Yes. So the thing is, I am not here to make a great video. I am here to practice joy in this moment. I am not here to even help people. Now, this sounds, I sound strange because you meant, well, George, I thought you were all about service. Yeah, in, 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 a, in a way I am, of course, but really at the bottom of it, I am not here to help you. I am not here to build a great business. I am not here to make money, certainly, but I'm not here to even help you. I think the core of why I'm here is to practice joy and heart in this moment. And by doing that, there may be the blessed outcome of helping you. That is a blessed result, wonderful. But I'm not gonna worry about that. It may be a blessed result of making a video that's okay, right? Or decent or bad, I don't care. But what I care about is, am I bringing heart and joy into this moment? That is the practice anyway, and that is the ideal. And I just keep on reminding myself of that as often as I can throughout the day. So this is what allows me to, to do my business, to do it for years and years, to keep doing it with energy, to do it without stress, um, and to draw great people to me. Um, people who are in my group programs all are, oh my God, people here are amazing people. Just really, really heartfelt people who are also thoughtful and wise. And it's like, how is that? Well, I, I think in part because I think I send out that vibration because I keep practicing bringing heart and joy in that moment. And it's not something all of us can do. And I think something that all of us are called to do in some way. Now, you might need to rephrase all of this into your own language. Maybe it's not joy and heart. Maybe for you, it's, you know, mindfulness and presence. Or maybe for you, it's strength and love or whatever it may be, you know, or truth and wisdom or whatever. But you need to phrase this in your own language in a way that it is about your quality of presence in every moment of every day, isn't it? And with that, everything tends to take care of itself. And I trust actually that everything will take care of itself. I trust that I am lifted and guided in every moment by a higher power. I believe that you are as well, that your life is completely protected through the ups and downs of life, which they will, there will be, you'll be okay. And that you'll, you'll still be here, to, you'll, still, you'll still experience what you're meant to experience. So with the trust, we are just simply, what we can do is simply show up and bring as much heart and trust and joy into the moment as possible. All right, I hope this helps and I wish you a truly fulfilling uh, rest of your day. Take care.